Hi, welcome to Glow's Kendra Kitchen and I'm Glow. Well, today I'm real excited to share a recipe with you that I have made uh, before and it is absolutely delicious. If you guys like chocolate and you like brownies, you're gonna love this. And it's made with my fresh milk flour. So I thought I would share with you what the, the grain looks like before I meld it. When you're doing baked goods like this without yeast, you're going to use soft winter wheat, and that's what this is. It's a short grain, and it's kind of light in color. If you're familiar with white lily wheat, that's exactly what this flower here is. It's not bleached or anything. I just milled this, and it does smell good. So for these particular brownies, I actually got the idea for them through this cookbook by Sue Becker. And if you don't have this cookbook, you might want to take a look at it if you're interested in fresh milling your flour. Um, she has some wonderful recipes in here. And the one that I um, took this from is called chocolate brownies. The difference between her recipe and the one that I'm going to use today is I am using a dark chocolate in it as well as regular cocoa. And um, I'm using just regular sugar and brown sugar in this. Hers, she um, uses a different type of sugar. Both recipes are delicious. I've done it both ways. But um, the sugars that I'm using today are more readily available to everybody. So it starts with one cup of melted butter. And then to that, I'm going to use one cup of granulated sugar and two cups of brown sugar. And you're going, holy cow, that's a lot of sugar. You're right, it is. But when you're cooking with cocoa, you're going to need that sugar. So it says to just combine this, which I do. And this whisk here that I have works great for stuff like this. This is called a, a Dutch or a Danish whisk, and you can see how this just really combines everything nicely. There, I think that's good enough. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to beat some eggs to go in this. So they say to add the one egg at a time. I already had cracked one egg. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the rest of the eggs, and then I'll be back and we'll continue on. Sounds good. All right, so we got the butter and the sugars and the eggs all combined there. So our next step is our fresh milled flour. I've got two cups of the um, soft winter wheat flour milled. And to that, I am, and you can also use all-purpose flour if you don't have this. Calls for one tablespoon of baking powder. And it calls for one teaspoon of salt. It calls for three quarters of a cup of cocoa. The original recipe that Sue had it calls for one cup of cocoa, but I'm using a quarter of a cup of what they call midnight cocoa. It's actually midnight black Dutch cocoa. I have it written on top. When I when we purchase this, it comes in a different oh, container, yeah. and then I just keep it in the canning jar. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I just pre-measured everything out. It just makes it easier. All right, so I'm just going to stir this to combine it. And it helps if you combine this all together uh, well, because then that way you don't get clumps of the cocoa. So I'm gonna finish combining this and I'll be back and then we're gonna add that to our other mixture here. Okay. okay, now it's time to combine the flour and cocoa mixture into our butter and egg and sugar mixture. You can see how nicely combined that was. Oh yeah. So that you don't get those lumps. 
And usually what I do is I add about half and then I stir it and then I add the other half. So I'm going to continue to do this and then I'll be right back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, and this is our final ingredient. It's real vanilla extract. There we go. How much was that? Tablespoon? One tablespoon. And the thing when you're using um, fresh milk flour is it's important to let this hydrate a little. So I'm going to let this set on my counter from 5 to 10 minutes, probably 10, just to hydrate. And then I'm going to put it in my oven. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to clean up my mess here. And this bakes at 350 degrees. Oh, look how nice that looks. It does look good. Yep. So anyway, I'll be back in about 10 minutes, and we're going to put this in the oven. Bye -bye. Well, our uh, batter has been hydrating for about 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and put it in our pan. Some thick batter. Mm-hmm. Sure smells good. Yeah, that plus the bread you made today. It's gonna yeah, be... it's been a fresh milled flour day here at our house. We made three loaves of bread earlier. House smells good, you guys. Almost out. Okay. Betty Lou's calling on his phone. Okay, let's finish this up. Oh, shoot. I just... Um... I'm just getting it into the corners. we go. All right, so I'm going to put this in my oven preheated at 350 degrees for 25 minutes and I'll be back and we're going to see what this looks like. Hi, well now is the best time, the taste test. Look at this you guys. Looks pretty good. Yeah, nice and dark and rich. And this kitchen smells Chocolatey. so good today with all these uh, fresh milled uh, treats that we've made. Brownie mm, bread. So chocolatey. And... Mm. Double thumbs up. It is so good, you guys. Mm -mm -mm. It's chocolatey. That fresh milk flour just really intensifies the flavor of the brownie. Makes it super moist. I can't say enough about it. It's probably one of the better brownies I've ever had. You've never had a chance to try fresh milled flour and baked goods? By all means, if you find it or if you're able to get a mill, give it a try. It is so healthy for you and delicious. And it's not hard to do. You'll be doing a justice to your family and your friends. I want to thank you for joining us today. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please consider to do so. Give me a like, thumbs up, and a comment. And we'll talk to you again later on in another video. Thanks again for joining. Bye-bye.